It's Eddie Trunk, and this is Trunk Nation on Sirius XM Volume 106. And it's always a great pleasure and honor to spend a few minutes talking to uh, one of the greats and one of my all-time rock heroes, Joe Perry of Aerosmith. Joe, great to visit with you. Thanks for a few minutes. How you been, okay? I've been good. I've been good. You know, like I said, ups and downs over the last couple of years, but it's been... uh I'm okay at this end of it, you know, uh, it's been kind of weird sleeping in Billy and I sleeping in our own beds, you know, um, night after night without having to worry about packing our bags at some <laughs> point. It's been, I'll tell you, it's been, you know, and it, after about a year, I said, this is how, how most people live, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> kind of strange, you know, I mean, having the same kitchen, the same everything, you know, so. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I really miss uh, being out there and traveling. You know, I mean, what, Joe? You know, what have yeah. you? What if in the time in the downtime of the the whole pandemic and lockdown and what have you? And all the artists that I talked to during that time, a lot have done different things. Some have picked up hobbies. Some have just enjoyed being home, like you just said. And others have written and made music, whether it's for solo records or for their band. Can you let us in on some of the stuff you did during the the lockdown? Did you do any things like that? Well, um, well, unfortunately, um, uh, Billy's mom, you know, my... uh, mother-in-law uh passed away right around the lockdown time when everything was like and so it was kind of it was it was a rough family time and just trying to figure out what the you know what was going on uh and uh at the same time we've uh, moved down to florida and so the, the rest of that year was was kind of moving moving down here and then uh after that, it was kind of like, uh, like moving in to a house. Anybody knows when they move out of a, well, not, not everybody, but we moved out of a house we've lived in for 33 years and uh, moved out here. And it was, uh, that was an adventure. And, you know, um, so, so we were doing that. And, you know, and I have a couple of uh, hobbies that, uh, you know, I got into and then, um, over the last year, I, I put a, a studio together and, and started, uh, and just started playing and, uh, uh, you know, for the next time we were going to play out sometime. And, uh, cause it seemed like every year it was like, well, next summer's canceled, you know? Um, anyway, so, it, it, you know, we were busy, but it was also great to kind of hang around and, and kind of live normally, you know? You know your house in Mass your house in Massachusetts. I was there once. Uh, we we did a radio special when you guys did the tour with Motley, and we did it. I did the interview with you and the band from your studio, which was called Boneyard, if I remember. Did yeah. you did you relocate all of that? Did you or did you sell it? Um, uh, no, I, I would, no, I didn't sell it. Right now, it's uh, it's it's in storage, and um, debating whether or not to. to to put it in uh, down here, I'm, I probably will, but um, it's things are starting to get rolling, and uh, uh, maybe next year. I don't know, but um, I'll definitely have Boneyard South, you know. But I do have a small a small studio set up so I can play and and uh, and write and stuff. So, uh, and also uh, we finished off the uh, you know I put that solo album out. Um, what, going on three years now, uh, you know, Sweet Soul and Manifesto. Yeah. And we had a bunch of songs that were left over, and we had written, we had written some, uh, like two or three more. And um, we figured out, well, listen, let's put, out, put it out on vinyl. And um, so we've been working on that and getting the, 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 the test pressings and, and the artwork which has been a lot of fun because, you know, that's one of the things I missed about, about vinyl is getting the, getting all that, that space to put pictures and, and uh, credits and all that stuff. But when you get the, when you get the record, you get the whole thing. You don't have to go digging around on, uh, 
on YouTube to get the uh, to get the credits, right. who played, and all that stuff. It's like, you know, I mean, you open up the the centerfold and it's got like forty or fifty pictures of all the guys that played on the record. It's a uh, it was a lot of fun putting that together, and that will be out. I don't know in the next couple of months, but um, actually, I think it's. I don't want to. I mean, I think it's a better version, but we're calling it Switzerland Manifesto Mark II. So uh, that that's going to be out on vinyl, and uh, we'll be playing some of the stuff on the, on these gigs that I have coming up. You know. And just to be clear, and we'll talk about those gigs in a second, but just to be clear, Switzerland Manifesto Two is going to be an all new record that's going to be made up of new stuff and stuff that didn't make the first one, or a reissue there's, of the other one with bonus tracks. There's, there's, I think there are four songs that were on the first one, um, and then the rest it, uh, is uh, stuff we recorded. That just it wasn't ready to go yet, and some some stuff that we wrote uh, over the last. It's hard hard to say, you know. Almost everything you go well a couple of years ago, you got to add two and a half to that, you know, where where really nothing happened. But um, except listening back to to different mixes and mastering and that kind of thing. But um, uh, in fact, the two two of the songs that I wrote. Um, I wrote with my sons. One was uh, with Roman, and one was with Tony, my you know, our youngest and the second youngest. And uh, I had some time in London on the last Aerosmith tour, and I booked some time in in, a, in Mickey Most Studio. Um, you, you probably remember who he is, and uh, um, and we wrote a couple of tunes, and that's those were on there. And uh, one of them is. Uh, it's got uh, Gary Sharon singing, and the other one has Chris Robinson from the Black Crows, you know. So um, those are, and we're, we're playing those live. So those are uh, those are on there and some other stuff that hasn't been out. And uh, so it's kind of like a taste of the last one and uh, a bunch of new stuff. Yeah, I saw Gary. Uh, Gary's a good friend. I saw him a couple weeks ago at an extreme gig. We were talking about this, and I know that he's getting ready to. He'll be in now. Now there's three Joe Perry project dates announced for the U.S. so far, and they're July 21, Hampton Beach Casino. July 22 with ZZ Top in Boston, and on the 23rd, Hard Rock in Atlantic City. The band for these shows, Joe, is going to include Gary singing. Right? Take us through the rest of the yep. lineup. Yeah, and then we've got. Um, uh, it, it just so happens that um, the drummer that, that played with me for almost a year with the last uh, the last lineup of the project, Joe Pett, uh, who's from Boston, and uh, he's gonna he's on drums, and then uh, um, Buck Johnson, who plays with uh, plays with me in, in Aerosmith on keyboards and also with the vampires and then and uh chris wise who's uh the bass player for the vampires and uh and now uh <laughs> joe Perry project number and uh so we've got a really good lineup of, of, of guys i'm really excited about it the thing is the uh the two shows that we're playing um in brazil that kind of kick things off where um they do this, uh, this this festival every year. Uh, they call it a blues festival, but it's uh, it's a blues festival like Montreux is a jazz festival. You know, the, the vampires played played there on the last tour, so you know they're a little loose about um, you know having to have uh, so called blues. But what they really want are some instrumentals. So I'm going to get to play at least a half an hour of instrumentals um, that I've, you know, scattered all over my, uh, my solo records. And one of them was, uh, was called Mercy. It's, uh, and it was uh, nominated for a Grammy. I lost the Les Paul, but, you know, hey, okay, you know, I mean. Not a bad I, person I, to lose I, to. <laughs> I, I, w I would have voted for him, you know, <laughs> anyway. And so, uh, um, so we're, 
you know, and I've never played those songs live, so we're really like uh, digging into those, and uh, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll play some more blues, bluesy based stuff. But you know, uh, as as usual with the project, we do some uh, some um, of my stuff, um, and uh, you know, and we'll throw a couple of Aerosmith songs in there, and uh, uh, you know, it's just. Uh, you never know what you're going to get, but it, you can, it, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know. So obviously, Joe, these dates happening in July, originally you were booked to be with Aerosmith in Vegas. The residency was supposed to start. That's now going to start in September. We'll talk about that in a second. But doing this, this window opened as a byproduct of of Aerosmith being pushed back with Steven having his issue. So really this is a bit of a silver lining in that for you that you have a chance to fire up the project again, right? Um, right. I mean, it was, you know, every once in a while I'll get a, I'll, I'll get a call, you know, um, and, you know, do you want to play this festival in, uh, in wherever? And, uh, and, you know, to pick up and just bring a band over to, you know, to England or to, uh, uh, you know, or Germany or something to, to play at a festival. It, it just doesn't make sense to go to get together and, and rehearse for a week and then go out and play one gig. So a lot of those, those have to turn down, but as it happened, this, this one came in, uh, right around the time we were, uh, you know, uh, canceling that, that the first Vegas run. And then, uh, we figured we'll, we'll, uh, if we can build some more shows in there, I mean, and uh, we were lucky to to be able to to grab those other couple of shows up in uh, the New England area, you know. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and it'll also get me kind of uh, warmed up and remind me of what I do for a living, <laughs> and uh, for when we get going with Aerosmith, you know. Do you do you think that there's a chance you'll add more project shows? I mean, there's three right now. Do you think you'll add more, or you're not able to because of the Aerosmith schedule? Well, the the uh, right now, I think that the uh, Aerosmith schedule has got got uh, got is pretty sewn up up till the holidays. But, um, you know, every time I, I put a, a band together like this, there are more guys I can call up that make the rehearsal times shorter. You know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll always be bringing new shows to the set, but if you, everybody's, you know, pretty comfortable playing, you know, some of the, some of the stuff, uh, it makes it easier to pick up and, and then do like uh, one or two or three three shows, you know. So um, I'm sure just by doing this, it's, you know, and, and having having uh, Chris on bass and uh, played with with Gary a bunch of times, and uh, as well as being on the record, you know, uh, the 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 list gets a little longer of guys I can call up, and if they, if they have some open time, I'll be able to to get out there and play some solo shows you know yeah no doubt but joe i've talked i've talked to you many times about the the project records especially the first two especially the first one let the music do the talking which is one of my favorite records ever i still listen to it to this day non-stop i love it top to bottom it's such a raw live real rock record i just love everything about it and how it still holds up can you take wow. the audience back into where you were at at the time making that record? It's such an interesting period. I know it was a tough time for you leaving the band, dealing with personal demons and all of that. But making that record, what are your recollections of doing it, stepping out of Aerosmith for the first time and recording that record? Did you have a good time doing it? Um, yeah. I mean, I had, you know, back back then in the in the seventies when when we were basically on the road or or doing out al you know doing albums uh we uh i always had kind of a of a a bunch of bunch of tunes ready to go and and kind of you know ready to bring to the band and uh you know kind of near the end of that uh, i i i'm i i mean, i know that i played it played let the music do the talking for Steven, but it was at a point where 
it was uh, a lot more was going on and it was just time to leave and take a, take a break. And like I've said many times, you know, uh, if cooler heads had prevailed, we would have taken a vacation. You know, it was time we've been working for the better part of the decade. Uh, and it was time we should have taken a couple of years off. And so we did, but it, it, you know, I had to, I had to leave the band for a while to, to do it. And, get some stuff out of my system. And then, um, so I had these, these, uh, riffs and, and, uh, it was, I had a lot of, lot going on, like you said, and it was pretty easy to come up with some, uh, some lyrics to go with it, you know? And, uh, and it was, and Jack was right there, you know, we'd worked together on, on, you know, pretty much the whole, again, the whole decade. And, uh, it was it was a lot of fun, you know, uh, and working with those guys. And uh, I remember seeing uh, Ralph Mormon singing uh, with that band, Daddy Warbucks, who was a, another Boston band. And I remember thinking, if if someday I need a singer, he's the guy I'm going to call. And uh, you know, th- that was back in like 1971 or something. And so, you know. Again, I was the, he was the first one I called, and then uh, and then you know, and, and David Hull was a was an old friend, and uh, and so on. So that putting the band together was happened pretty quick. But the best part was really getting in and, and playing the stuff live in the studio. You know, um, it is it's pretty. Uh, and again, back then, it, it's not like you had unlimited uh, tracks. You know, you had it was went to tape, and uh, you did takes, and when you got a good one, that was it. And then you just did did, a, did some overdubs, and bang, you know. And uh, you know, but it was uh, it was kind of tough because I, I know the record. You know, it sounds like sour grapes, but you know, I I talked to the, to the managers, you know, Aerosmith's managers back then, and they they actually came on and said, you know, like. You know, like, if, don't push this record because we'll starve them back to Aerosmith. Because everybody, you know, they the record company wanted the, the band back. You know, the managers wanted the original lineup. And it was kind of like, when I heard that, I kind of suspected it. But when I, you know, two decades later, when I was, or three decades, when I was writing the book and I started hearing some of that stuff from uh, the horse's mouth, so to speak, um, cause I always wondered why it didn't get any more notice than it did. And, uh, you know, it's kind of been, uh, but you know, Hey, that, that was then this is now. And, uh, you know, Aerosmith, we played, uh, let the music do the talking on the first, uh, first uh, record when we got back together so, yeah yeah um, it was the, that's that's the yeah. interesting thing it was the let the music do the talking was the lead track with rewritten lyrics from from done with mirrors the first record back when you rejoined the group but you you talk about how that record was received at the time and maybe you feel like it was that whole period was sabotaged to some degree because they wanted you back in aerosmith but I'll tell you, 40-something 40, 40 years later, for people listening, seek that record out, man. It is one of my favorite records to this day. And, Joe, real quick on the on Let the Music Do the Talk, and I had a listener ask me that uh, they can't find that record anywhere. It seems to be out of print now. Do you know if there's any plans to have it put back in print or on streaming or maybe even do a special edition of it at some point? Well, I would, right now we're, like, like neck deep in getting, you know, getting ready to celebrate Aerosmith's 50th. You know, the, the way that they, uh, they, they counted, I guess, is from the 25 years from the first record release. You know, in my book, it's like when the fans first sits, sits together in a room and goes, all right, uh, we're all together. We're going to make it or break it. You know, and uh, and that's that's when I think a band starts. But you know the way uh, the way that the I guess they they just say you know the, uh, when the band's first record comes out that's uh, you know I think that's how the fans later, see it. Yeah, that's how the fans would so, see it. Yeah, 
Yeah, so so uh, that's that's coming up uh, uh, next year, and we're just starting to get into our into our. Uh, we spent the last three years, like cat, you know, uh, going through uh, just kind of try, like cataloging all the stuff. I mean, we have so many tapes and so many shows from every decade, um, and um, and different. And the other thing is. You know, every every song that we recorded in the studio, you know, there was like two or three takes, and you know, one of them was the one we used, and for whatever reason, doesn't mean it was a, a bad take. Um, it just maybe there was something about it that we liked better than the other one. So we're going to release some of those, uh, and there. Are, so there are a lot of different, different, different things that are going to come out. There are songs that we've. Uh, we haven't played in, in forever and those those will be released i mean uh so it's uh it's almost like getting a whole a whole uh whole nother look at at uh at all the stuff that we did all, all, over all those years you know and uh, um so that's what we've been doing right now because we've got that like i said the 50th is coming up and uh uh you know the the uh, the gig in, at Fenway Park is kind of like the, the 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 you know playing at home for the first time in a long time is kind of like uh, uh, it, it's kicking off the the, the rollout and we've got box sets coming out and all that so um, but somewhere in there I'm gonna you know I've got uh, you know Paul Geary is managing my my solo stuff and. We're going to start, you know, digging into my, my stash of stuff. You know, I've got something like what, seven, seven or eight solo things. Oh, now. sure, uh, yeah. Some, you know, some better than others, but all of them are like, uh, anyway. So, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to, to release, get them all on vinyl at least. You know, vinyl on, the, on, this, uh, on this new one is like, it sounds so, so much better than, you know, I've got got, what, got the get it off uh, iTunes. Listen to it on the on the you know off of my my uh, my phone or my iPad, and then I listen to it off the vinyl, and it's like it's the the difference is striking. You know, I mean, you hear so much more in there and so much depth, but you know, I you know, you got to leave it up to the listener to decide. You know, what's better. But I think that, it, it, you know, having the chance to listen to vinyl, do it, you know. Uh, anyway, so that's, uh, you know, I would like to be able to do that. I don't know if, uh, you know, I'll be able to, you know, tour the kind of tour that, uh, solo tour that I'd like to do. Because if we can, uh, like we've got the vampires, I think the, we announced the dates a week ago. And, uh, for Europe. For, yeah, for next next summer, and I don't know, we may do some 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 gigs in the states, but uh, it's really hard between Johnny's schedule and and Alice's and my schedule to, to get. That's why we had to book it so far out, you right. know, because um, it was like it was really, the calendar's empty, so to speak. So we we uh, kind of like uh, put our heel mark on those couple of a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, cause that, that band is, I love playing with that band. So anyway, so we got that going on and, uh, yeah, you got a lot then, going on. <laughs> it's great that at then, this point, you know, 50 years in, you still got so much going on. We'll be right back with more with Joe Perry. Let's get back to more of my conversation with Joe Perry of Aerosmith on trunk nation on volume. All right. Two, <laughs> two quick things. And I promise you, I'll let you go. Two quick things. The last Aerosmith album was Music from Another Dimension. It came out quite a long time ago at this point. Do you think that stands as the final ever Aerosmith album of all new material, or do you hope that the band can make a new record at one at some point? Um, you know, at, at, for a long while after that record came out, I thought, you know, because we've put everything on there, every riff that we've had lying around then. I was thinking, well, uh, you know, 
why bother? We've already, you know, we've got all this other material that we need to release that the fans, I think, would love to hear. You know, different versions of Dream On studio quality, you know, but you never know. I mean, uh, Stephen and I have been, you know, uh, our, our villas are like side by side in, in Vegas. So it's like, you never know. I, you know, I mean, it doesn't, if you're in, you got some inspiration, it doesn't take long to write a song, you know, whether it's great or not. It's like, you don't know, you know, but, but all I can say is you never know, you know, I mean, I would hate to think that was the last one, but you know, uh, we've got so much stuff out there. It's hard to think about like trying to do something new, you know, but what the hell? You know, you never know. Right. It's a big uh, catalog to compete against. And the last question I have for you, and I'll let you go on this. I always wondered this. Aerosmith's catalog so expansive. Uh, 50 years we're talking about celebrating. If there's one record in the Aerosmith catalog where you could get a do-over and you could go back and redo it or reassess it or just, you know, just do a do-over, the one you'd love to have back, is there a record in the catalog you feel that way about? Uh, well, I think that uh, I always felt that way about Done With Mirrors. I felt that it wasn't finished. You know, I mean, I don't think that we, I think we were a little, uh, you know, because we're coming back after the, you know, the West Coast had taken over. You know, the, the whole, uh, you know, the whole, um, the sound and the way guitar players were playing, it was a whole different animal than, than, than the decade we came from. And so it was, you know, and working with Ted Templeman was like, a, it was like great. I mean, Jesus, he, he some of the, his, his track record, I mean, sure. so I think we were, we were both kind of like in awe of each other. So we ended up not throwing down as much as we would have liked to, you know? And so that one, that's one that I would like to talk about. But on the other hand, you know, I got a call, a couple of years ago from, uh, I think it was Classic Rock in yep. England, the magazine. And Number one voted. record of the 80s, they called it, yeah. And, and I go, what? <laughs> you, you, you sure you talk? Anyway, uh, so. I love I, that know, record, not, though. There's uh, my fist, your face, and there's stuff on that record I love. So it, it's well, all just perspective, really. You know, and uh, so when we, uh, um, so I, I, you know, I, thought about it for a couple of days and I started listening to it from the point, their point of view, from, you know, the rough and raw. And, and then I started hearing what, what they were talking about. It reminded me of like the first or the second record, right? you know? And so I, I like, again, I, I've always thought that one could have, could have, we could have gone back in the studio and, and upped it, but you know, there's something about it. And it's funny cause you know, I, I always ask Gary, you know, who's singing, uh, in the project uh, coming up, I was asking, you know, what songs, what, what songs you want to sing, you know, uh, and uh, my fist your face was one, like one of the one of the ones on the list, and trip away at the stone, yeah. and so those are in the set. Oh. So, uh, so uh, that's one of the things that I think at least. Uh, People know up and at least where where I've played. Um, I, I like to pull songs out that you know Aerosmith hasn't got to yet or whatever. I think last time we were doing Pandora's Box, so this time we're doing uh, doing some other ones. You know, right? Uh, as, along with uh, anyway, I, I'm not even sure, but it's it's a it's a cross section. You know, um, so anyway, well, listen. That's it. You know? All good stuff, man. All good stuff. I can't thank you enough for the time, Joe. I won't keep you longer. Everybody go to JoePerry.com, Aerosmith.com. And again, the project dates July 21st, Hampton Beach Casino, 22nd, Leader Bank Pavilion with ZZ Top, and the 23rd, Sound Waves at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City. Maybe some more to come. And of course, the Aerosmith residency returns to Vegas on right. September 14th. I'll be seeing you out there at some of this stuff, Joe. I'm looking forward to it. And my best to your family. Thank you so much I'm for the time, on. man. Thanks a lot, man. And uh, yeah, it would be good to see you. Yeah, you too, lot. man. Always is. Thank you. Talk Take care you. of yourself. See you. you too. Bye bye. bye.
Well, fantastic talking to Joe Perry. My thanks to Joe for making the time. Great hour talking to one of the true icons in the world of rock music.